hi friends um welcome back to the channel i'm so sorry that you guys see me in the state that i'm in but um there's a word that i have to release i had a dream this morning i slept in today um and that was one of the best decisions i ever made because that dream came after i decided to sleep in, in that last sleep cycle and um i'm so sorry i feel so self-conscious because i have been crying um because of the message that the lord has for us today so um just take this word to the lord guys that's all i'm gonna say disclaimer wise but i just i'll share the dream let me share the dream first and we'll get into what god is saying to us um so in the dream i was with a group of people outside a huge building, a huge church building, auditorium. And um, I actually didn't see this building from outside. I just know that once we got in, I could see how vast it was. So we were outside and we were with the groom. There was the groom in the stream and there was a lot of us, but we were, when I say a lot of us in the grander scheme of everything else, there were not so many but there were many of us it felt like a lot of us even though if you had to look at it from a bigger point of view it's it's not the majority of the population um and we were part of this procession that was ushering the groom into the church into the auditorium the bride was waiting at the altar which isn't how we do it here um when you know when there's a wedding it's the other way around the bride is the one that comes in and meets the groom um at the altar but in the stream it was the other way around and we were the ones those of us that were part of that procession knew that we were in a good position i don't even know how to describe it i'm so sorry i just want to try and get them this message in one piece but we knew that we were privileged. We knew that we're, being part of this wasn't just random. We couldn't just go and be a part of the procession. We were chosen to be part of that procession. And we started to move in. And then we started to just cheer. Um, I was ululating. Those who know what that is will know. <laughs> and when I did that, I could hear some other people, you know, amongst that crowd of people also doing the same. And I thought, hey, you know, I'm not the only African person here. Um, and I remember just saying to someone, you know, I just had to throw in some of my Africanness in it. And they were like, yeah, that was beautiful. You know, everyone was cheering in their own way as we were entering this this church um and i say it's a church but it just felt so much larger and as we entered i just saw how oh by the way we were throwing we were already throwing like petals you know that usually happens after the vows are taken and the bride and groom are coming out but we were already just throwing petals into where the groom was into all of us right and then so we entered the the, the church and i could see how vast it was it was a huge auditorium um it was aligned with red carpets i don't even know how to describe it because you would think that the carpet is only on the floor right but no this red carpet was all over and where the the what do you call it whether it was like the railings between the rows and the seats um had like gold trims it was all gold and we we, I remember us entering and ushering the groom in and then the scene switched to the time of preparation when we were preparing for this wedding and the groom was with me and I was, um, I remember that I'd left my bag somewhere and I was worried that someone had stolen um, my phone and then I realized no I actually have my handbag here with me, it was just hanging towards the back so I moved it to the front. And even as I moved it to the front, I opened my bag to just check that my phone was in there and I saw it. But then I looked again and I realized that, wait a minute, this isn't my phone. This is the, the case, the cover. My phone was taken and I was so distraught. I was absolutely just distraught that my phone had been taken. I began to think of, of um, the limitations of trying to find a solution. I was distraught. I was thinking how I had been, I wasn't going to have access to 
um, my bank accounts. I wasn't going to have access to um, family. I wasn't going to have access to so much because I'm not um, in the dream. I wasn't in my home country, which is actually the current situation. Um, but I just had this overpowering um, sense of just being cut off from everything, trying to figure out how I can... Um, you know reconnect right and then i thought well you know what i actually have a second phone and when i looked in my bag i saw the cover of that phone and i realized even that phone had been taken from me and i was just hysterical just completely distraught and hysterical there were two so we were like in an outside place the groom was right there with me and he wasn't saying anything he didn't really say anything throughout this dream but he was right there with me um and I remember just thinking, you know, I'm going to have to borrow some money so I can get to where I need to get to and then I'll pay them back once I have access to stuff. And there were these two guys sitting on the side of the road. They looked like uh, criminals, but, you know, that was like my perception because I was so distraught over losing my phone. And the next scene, um, I think it was also part of the preparation time. Um, and I remember just running running off just completely just overwhelmed and just you know just wanting to get away from everything and I ran to a place which was like a rooftop type of place and when I was there uh, and as I was running the groom was running after me he was pursuing me and when I got to this uh, rooftop place I could still see the church it was like this window it was like a triangular type of window but I could see the church I could see the the priest who was going to perform the ceremony and I knew that the bride was in there as well and this groom chased after me and I was thinking why are you chasing after me your bride is there waiting and like I said he didn't say anything to me he was just there for me he was pursuing me I felt like he was coming for me that he loved me and he wanted me and I remember there was a distraction as well. There was some man who um, peeked out of the window and um, he had like a very distinct look. He had dreadlocks and he had on this really smart suit and he was really buff and he was saying things to me. I couldn't, uh, I don't remember what he was saying, but he was trying to entice me into a relationship with him. And that was the dream. Okay, I think I have calmed down. Um, like I said, I was not planning to come on today at all. <laughs> it was going to be a day of just complete rest. But um, I just, this dream, just the more I was sitting here thinking about it, bawling my eyes out as I even began to realize on even more deeper levels um, what a, what, what an important dream this is. So I didn't break down the symbols. I haven't structured this at all. Like I said, I was going to be doing. This is so impromptu. Um, but I do have a scripture that came to mind. Um, and this is from... A, a, actually, when I was sharing this dream with my friend earlier, she just said the marriage supper of the Lamb, right? Because in my mind, this had, this had to do with Jesus. Jesus is the groom in the dream. And so I looked up the scripture, and it's Revelation 19, verse 17, which says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His wife has made herself ready. So in that first scene, when there was this procession, with the groom <laughs> we were I, or let me say I was part of this group of people that were that had made it into this <sighs> into this procession I was a part of this and it was a privileged place to be you were lucky you were so blessed to be in that and I believe that there, there, are, there are a lot of you out there and who this word is for, who are, who have been, um, who've really been tried. You've really been through some, some intense times. And it's going into that second scene where my two phones were taken from me and I was just distraught and feeling like everything had been taken. I literally felt like all my connection to everything was gone and I wasn't going to be able to do this, that or the other. And I felt stuck. You've been feeling that way. You felt like everything was just ripped away from you. Everything. 
any connection you had to your life, any connection you had to anything that is important to you, that is dear to you, was cut off. You've been through that recently and you have endured. The Father has taken you through the fire. He has helped you to make yourself ready. It says here, and his wife has made herself ready. In the dream, I didn't see the bride once. And I believe that's because the Lord was pointing to the church, his people, as the bride in the dream. It wasn't a specific person in the dream. I just knew that the bride was there and ready. And um, so this is for those of you that are in that group that has really just, God has taken you through some things. He's cut you off from some people, cut you off from so much that you held dear, that you felt was part of your promise, that you felt like, God, this is, this is the dream, isn't it? But you've taken it away. Um, you have made it into the procession. You are ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. You have made yourself ready is what God is saying to you today. You may feel like you are just failing dismally. Like you're letting God down. You're trying. You're trying so much to be what He needs you to be. And you almost feel like you've lost everything. You're so frustrated. You don't feel like you deserve any of this. But Jesus still pursues you. He is still pursuing you. When the groom chased after me, when the groom stood next to me, the whole time that I was trying to figure out my phone situation, he was standing there quietly next to me. In each of the scenes, I was with the groom. He was with me. In that last scene where I ran off and he ran after me, the first thing that came to mind when I was speaking this dream out was he leaves the 99 to go save the one because I said to him, why are you leaving your bride? Why would you come after me? And all I could sense was he wanted me. He loved me. And it's not to say that he didn't love or care for anyone else. He leaves the 99 for the one. So if you are feeling like you are completely just out of it and you've you feel like you're being punished. You feel like this has been so intense. You've lost so much. And you just want to leave. You just want to run away. You just want to just be like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what you want from me, Lord. He's still going to pursue you. He's still going to leave the 99 and come up to you. He's not going to let you go because you have made yourself ready. And he wants you to know that you are ready. That you are ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. He is by your side no matter what. In everything that you're experiencing, He is by your side. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He is by your side. When it feels like everything has been stripped from you, He's right there with you. When you feel like giving it all up because you just can't make sense of it, He's going to come after you and He's not going to let you go. I'm going to read the scripture one more time and let you guys go. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory. I was praying to God today and just saying, Lord, I just want to laugh again. Like laugh from the depths of my soul. There has been so much loss this year. So much has happened. Yes, there have been some really great moments. But this is just one of those times where the pruning has been so deep that it's been a death. You, you literally have died. Well, not literally, but the spirit, man, the soul. And you, have, you are being resurrected into this new life. And just that transition into this new life is where a lot of you are at. And he's saying to us, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. This is a time of being glad and rejoicing and giving Him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His wife has made herself ready. Some key things that I did not mention when I did the video recording is the auditorium in the interpretation, you know, the red symbolizing the blood of Jesus, His sacrifice, and the gold representing that kingship, that royalty, that... Um, you know, complete, I mean, when I see gold to me, that's just, you know, what, what do you call it? It's, it's so much value. It's so valuable. Um, and royals, you know, would be adorned in gold or, you know, be surrounded by gold. So yeah, just that link to that kingship and royalty and authority as well. 
and um, also that auditorium slash church was packed with people. There were people who were there to witness this and um, they were all smartly dressed. They were all eager to see this marriage happen. So yeah, that was such a beautiful part of the dream. And the Lord is saying that so many will see this. So many will get to witness the beauty of this union of Christ and his church, right? And that man at the end with the um, yeah, just, he was a cool looking guy, you know, really someone that you would take note of. And he just represented the enemy trying to give a different option to say, if that's too painful for you, I've got an offer for you. Come to me. I will love you in a better way. And we all know that the enemy is not capable of love. So yeah, just the warning in that part of the dream to say, Just know that Jesus loves you so much. He's by your side through it all. When you run, he's going to run after you. He's going to leave the 99 for you. And don't get distracted by the enemy. Don't don't let him entice you into anything that would would lead you away from from the love of Christ. And of course, nothing can separate us from from his love. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is be careful. The enemy is is going to try and give you an alternative that seems less painful. And it's for you to um, stand your ground and, and stay with the groom, with the one who loves you, who loves you so much. Like I said, I did not prepare this word like you know I normally do where I put it properly in notes and everything but I trust that what God wanted me to say has come out here today um please excuse the way that I look (laughs) Uh, like I said I was sitting here contemplating this dream and the more I listened to what God was saying the more I sensed his deep love and compassion for his children who have just been through the most I just knew it. this is the the thing is he told me twice <laughs> do a video and the first time I was like please just look at me I'm not gonna do a video in this state and when he said it the second time I just pulled out my camera and I said I'm just gonna record and just go with it Lord um, because I I don't even know what to say but yeah that's 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 the word that's what God is saying um, if he reveals anything more <laughs> and when I'm karma I may come back and share but I think that's that's what God wanted to share today. <sighs> Friends, he's he's a God who is in love with us. That's the sense I got when that groom chased me in the dream. Just completely in love with me. He is completely in love with you. He is completely smitten. And he's not gonna let you go. He's not gonna say, Oh, it's just one. I have so many. No, you're important. You are so important. And he's not going to let you go. He's not going to let you die. He's not going to let you fall apart. He's going to help you and he's going to pull it all together for you. Don't forget that. Trust that and trust him. Okay, I'm going to go. Thank you uh, for listening. I pray that this word has been a blessing to those who is for. God loves us. He loves us so much. Because we're, we're that special to him. It's that simple. We're just that special to him.